Hello YouTubes, it's about time I got some lights around my layout but first I need to install some wiring. So I'm going to make this as simple as possible. I'm going to use some red and green wire. I'm going to use some little two wire connectors from Aliexpress and a good old vintage DC track power unit. So I do intend to have at least three lit sections of my track. This section is going to be my national park, so that's going to be more like campfire lights. This section might be joined to this section for lights. This is going to be my locomotive maintenance yard. This whole section along here is going to be like Tim Hortons, Kentucky Fried Chicken, maybe a McDonald's, I get one, railway station. So that whole section is going to be lit in the same controller. And this is going to be my main town with another controller. But let's start with the first one. So I'm going to wire this similar to how I wired my main bus bar, bus lines for all my track. So if you look underneath, I have two main wires with little droppers going to the track. So I'm going to do something similar, but this time I'm going to use red and green because I've already got black and white underneath and I don't want to confuse things. So I'm going to run two wires all the way along here. Just two, they don't have to look back or anything. Just two wires. So that will go to the positive, that will go to the negative of the DC controller. And I will probably mount the controller probably just here for now. Obviously I'm going to have to make something a bit prettier than that, but that'll do for now. I'll probably just use a zip tie to stick it to that leg. So let me cut some wire, hook it underneath somehow, add the controller. It's pretty simple, I don't really have to over explain that. One side goes there, one side goes there. It does matter which way around they go because I'll be using LEDs and they require the positive and the negative in the right way round. <laughs> Okay, you with me so far? We have our power controller firmly attached to that stud. Wires are going off the back, going all the way along the full stretch of this back wall. Now here's something that we need to take into account before we go any further. And that is, what sort of power is this power pack pumping out? According to this, it says DC 17 volts. AC 18, but we're only going to be using DC. So if it's 17 volts and we're only using 3 volt LEDs, then they're going to pop them. So we're going to need resistors. However, just because it says 17 volts on the power pack doesn't mean it's pumping out 17 volts. So I'm going to use my tiny, tiny little budget voltmeter and see how much power we're actually getting out of that controller. So I've got my positive negative prongs attached to the output of my controller. And as you can see, it's already... 0 0.02 volts and it's all the way down that's why i want a separate plug for my controller because it's technically live even just a tiny bit all right let's see how much power it's actually kicking out well it's pretty pretty full 17.4 but this might not be completely accurate so we're going to take that as a proper 17 volts coming out of the controller and we have to add the correct resistor so we don't pop our LEDs based on the 17 volts. Now there is a proper Ohm's law calculation you can do. I've got a fairly quick and dirty method. Let me explain what I do, but don't do this unless you want to blow up your system. It's totally up to you. So let's say I'm using this strip light. There's a wee tiny one. The way these strip lights work, they're really simple. 
If you can see there that there's three little LEDs, each set of three of these LEDs has got its own little resistor. I think it's a thousand ohm resistor. It's still really bright on 12 volts. So let's pretend there's no resistor because we don't want it mega bright. That would be silly. What I'm going to do is, let's say these are 12 volt, pumping out 17. That's an excess of 5 volts. What I normally do is take that number 5, divide it in half, so 2.5, and add a zero. So for me, that would be a 250 ohm resistor. I would require absolute minimum to stop this from popping. So what I'll probably do is put a 500 ohm resistor for every 12 volt set of bulbs like that. Bearing in mind, each set of three got its own resistor. But that's my quick and dirty method of working out Ohm's law. Don't quote me on it. So next step. Where are we actually going to drill the holes for all the buildings? Well, obviously that completely depends on where your buildings are going to be. For example, I'm pretty happy with where the station is because I've already glued down that cork base to get up to the height of the platform. So that's where that's going to go. And a lot of buildings are floorless, like this. So I can drill a hole anywhere. Bearing in mind, you don't want to be drilling into a stud down below. So you've got a huge choice with that particular building. That's where that one's going. And I've not attached the roof yet because I want to install lights in there. Let's see what this one's like on the underside. Okay, so we've got a hole at the back there. So anywhere in that square area, once we decide where that building's going. This one's actually already wired for lights. It's even got an interior that you can't see because it doesn't have lights yet. And we've already got wires, but as you can see, that one's solid on the underside, so those wires have to come out there. So that one's going to have to be pretty accurate. So let me decide on where Timmy's is going. We'll drill a hole. I'm not going to do everything today. I just want to get the wiring sorted on the underside, get that plugged in, switch that on, and then at a later date, we will decide on all the other build. well, the other two buildings. I've got more coming. I have decided that my Tim Hortons is going right there and we're going to have a shared car park on this side for Tim Hortons and the railway station. So let's just mark around this. This is going to get covered in the future, don't worry about the black lines. And I've left just enough room at the back for the drive through. Plenty of room there for a car to get round and stop at the window. Okay. Now we need to decide where the, the big hole is going to go. Yeah, it can be it can be fairly large, don't worry about it, no one's going to see it. And that's to feed the big wires through it. Now, I will be using smaller connectors in the future, but these are already wired up. So it does need to be big enough for both of them to squeeze down the hole. And I've got, let's see, I've got three inches of foam to go through, and then nearly an inch of plywood to go through before it gets down. So we're going to need a fairly... Fairly big drill bit. This one should do the job. Yes, I know it's gigantic. You're not going to see it, don't worry about it. And the next time I do it, I'll use much smaller wires. Right, cover your ears. Oh, let me clean that up. So these wires will fit quite nicely down there, along with our big fat plugs and hide down there. Right, what happens down below? We just need to connect those wires to the new bus lines. We're wired all the way on the underside of the layout. Now, you could use a connecting block, you can use just cut and twist, don't do that. Personally, I like to use these. I'll give you a closer look and I'll give you an example of how they work. Let's pretend this is one of our bus wires. This is our connector. You see how there's a little semicircle? Put that in. Well, put the wire into the little valley. You see those little teeth? Fold that over there. Get a big chunky set of pliers. Squish that down. That grabs the wire. So now the connector is attached to the wire. Then get a spade connector. I'm using insulated ones. Obviously, you would attach that to one side of your LED wiring. Pops in there. Clip it in. Bob's your auntie. Simples. 
Right, I need to go and attach these to all my LED wires. So that's all my plugs on and all my connectors on. Well, that's my plugs, that's my connectors. Now, I do have two sets of LEDs on this one building. So normally you would just have two. So, red ones to the red ones. And black ones to the green ones. Gotcha. We're all wired up. Tidy that away. And by tidy, I mean shove it up there a bit. And the wiring's done for our first building. Time to see if it works and if I have the right resistors in those LEDs in that building. Now, if this doesn't work first time, it might just be that the wires coming out of the controller are the wrong way around. But remember, it's an old DC controller. We can just switch it to reverse and that will reverse the polarity. Let's see if I got it right first time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's lovely. And just, just for, you know, what's and giggles, I'm going to turn the power all the way up. If I blow it, I blow it, but at least I'll know that uh, I can wire them like this in the future. Yeah, so that's full power. It doesn't really make a difference brightness wise because they're LEDs so that's fine I think I'll probably stick to kind of halfway power just to be in the safe side because as I say it doesn't seem to get any brighter with with more power anyway so that's jolly nice let me switch off the big light and you'll get a better effect well isn't that lovely it's got that it's got that 80s vibe to it which I really like so you've got the bright white LEDs on the inside and the sort of yellowy street lights on the outside. I think that looks awesome. Very happy with that. So full steam ahead then, getting all the lights done in my station and my KFC. And I'm sure I've got another building to go along that stretch. And there will be another couple as well. I might even put something in my little yellow barn. Excellent. So happy I did that. Right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.